Sports gained popularity in the 1920s. School teams were formed for students. Several sports, such as golf, that had previously been unavailable to the middle class, became open. Record-breaking athletes also attracted many new people to various activities. Throughout the early 20th century, Shoeless Joe Jackson was famous for his bizarre nickname, Shoeless. The way he got it is during a game he played in Anderson, he suffered from blisters on his foot from a new pair of cleats, and they hurt so much that he had to take off his shoes before an bat. As play continued, a heckling fan noticed Jackson running to third base in his socks and shouted, You shoeless son of a gun, you! And the resulting nickname, Shoeless Joe, struck him throughout the remainder of his life. He is remembered for his performance on the field and for his association with the Black Sox scandal, in which members of the 1920 Chicago White Sox participated in a conspiracy to fix the World Series. As a result of Jackson's association with the scandal, Kennesaw Mountain Landis, Major League Baseball's first commissioner, banned Jackson from playing after the 1921 season. Shoeless Joe Jackson and seven other members of the Chicago White Sox baseball team are accused of losing the 1920 World Series to help out gamblers. Three other players confessed and then ratted out five before a grand jury. This caused him to lose his spot in the Hall of Fame. It was formed by 11 teams in the 1920s, the American Professional Football Association, or the APFA. With the league changing its name to the National Football League in the 1922, or the NFL, the league currently consists of 32 teams from the United States. It is divided evenly into two conferences, the American Football Conference, or the AFC, and the National Football Conference, the NFC. And each conference has four divisions that have four teams each. The Negro National League, or the NNL, was one of several Negro leagues which were established during the period in the United States in which organized baseball was segregated. Led by Rube Foster, the owner of the Chicago American Giants, the NNL was established on February 13, 1920 by a collation of team owners at a meeting in Kansas City, YMCA. The new league was first was the first African American baseball circuit to achieve stability and last more than one season. At first, the league operated mainly in Midwestern cities, ranging from Kansas City in the west and to Pittsburgh in the east. In 1924, it expanded into the south, aiding franchises in Birmingham and Memphis. The, with the introduction of the Cork Center Baseball in 1926, pitchers soon began to develop freak deliveries such as the Shine Ball, Spitball, and the Emery Ball, etc. Drastic changes were made in the rules in 1920 to outlaw these pitches. However, recognized Spitball pitchers were permitted to continue using their speciality the remainder of their careers. Most successful of these, and the last to close, his major league career was Burley Grimes, who pitched last for the Yankees in 1934. George Herman Ruth, born on February 6, 1895, in Baltimore, Maryland, and died in 1948, often known to his fans as Babe Ruth. He hit a total of 60 home runs in 1927. This record breaker would remain a record itself until 1961 when Roger Eugene Maris hit 61 home runs. The record has since been broken by Sammy Sosa of the Chicago Cubs with 66 home runs in 1998 and Mark McGuire of the St. Louis Cardinals with 70 in the same year. He first committed to professional baseball at the age of 20 by playing in the minor league Baltimore Orioles. He later signed with the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. In 1919, as a player for the Red Sox, he hit 29 homers. He joined the Yankees in 1920 and hit 54 homers that year. The next year, he increased to 59. He finally broke the old record in 1927 with 60.
In that year, too, the Brooklyn Dodgers of the National League took on the Cleveland Indians of the American League. Though it was not yet possible to broadcast the game over the radio, when Dodgers pitcher Burley Grimes scored on Thomas Griffith's double, word went over the telegraph lines to the thousands gathered in Times Square. Watch the flashing scoreboard. Incidentally, Cleveland won the series that year, five games to two. But if baseball was America's popular passion, tennis, once the sport of the privileged, was broadening its appeal, thanks in part to the meteoric career of Vince Richards, filmed in an exhibition match with world champion Carl Kozolo. Richards was to become one of the first tennis pros and was among the few who could stand up to Carl Kozolo's celebrated trick shots. The significance of sports in the Roaring Twenties was not only keeping them out of trouble, also the Great Depression was just starting and sports is a way to get away from all the stress and just let loose and take your anger out. <laughs> 